So I want to talk, consistent with that, and kind of trust in the community, I want to talk for a moment about the role that John Smale and his wife Phyllis played in the community. What advice do you think that John would give leaders today who are thinking about their role in social and environmental issues? Pretty much saying what you just said, Rob. Uh, that businesses for their own welfare, but in terms of why they exist, have a responsibility to make a difference in the community. One of the things you're going to see when you read this book is how adroitly, I believe, Rob has picked up quotations, things John said from a whole variety of resources and brought them in. And just to pick up on what you were just saying, and this was the speech from 1977. He was president of the company, not yet CEO. And he said, just as you said, Rob, the foundation of a strong corporate structure in America must be based on public trust in the integrity and performance of the business community. All the rhetoric and theory in the world won't do a thing unless business has that trust. And trust is earned by actions. That's all, John. That's John 100%. It's not just words. It's actions. By doing not just what is legal, but what is right. And similarly, a corporation must regard itself as a true citizen of the community in which it operates, pulling its weight to help solve community problems because it knows that the health and welfare of the community are important to its own health and its own welfare. One example of this that I think relates to your question is the role that many of you would know or remember that John played uh, in the Ismail Commission. You know, in one of the not infrequent times when our city was going to hell in a handbasket in terms of its infrastructure, uh, the mayor, Lucan, Charlie Lucan at the time, decided I've got to get a commission to fix the streets and fix the sewers and everything else that needed fixing. And he knew the one person he ought to go to if he was going to collect the business community it was, it was, of course, John. So John took it on, and he'd say with help, and I mean he led this thing personally. I don't know if any of you in the room were involved in that commission. Were you involved? Um, uh, but he called people across the country, the heads of every company, GE, uh, Fifth Third, Kroger, and not one person said no. And that's not surprising. As Charlie Meacham said, Charlie was the head of TAP Broadcasting, nobody would say no to John because they knew where he was coming from. They knew he had a purpose. And they also knew that he'd be making sure it was done right. And that happened. And it was a great success. And Charlie was very confused by John, I think, in the beginning. He thought that John would simply get into the project and hand it off to other people. Uh, that wasn't the way John worked. If he's into it, it's his baby. And he was at the table and making it happen. That's a great example. There's so many other things that he was involved in. Stop the hate speeches, involved with the in diversity. But Phyllis was very involved too. And there is what, Rob, where is that? thing that was built that, uh, somewhere coming into the city that she put together? I can't remember. I think you're talking about what they call the, the anniversary garden. Um, yeah, the, the, she was a great gardener, as some of you would remember, and she wanted to make sure this city was beautiful. And John, of course, devoted to get the start to this male park. And that was in Phyllis's honor. That was in, his, that was in her memory. That's why he started that. And of course, since then, and Kathy really let it, Kathy Kaldemeyer, as she, if she were to see a lot of help, has made that park into what it is today. And I'm glad his name's attached to it, because I think that's appropriate in terms of signifying his care. Now you have... Hmm. I think something that's interesting to note is that he did not intend to have his name. He what? He did not intend to have his name on that park. He did not? No, Kathy put it there because she thought he deserved it. That figure. He, I'm he not surprised. Not intend to put his that, name on that, that figures. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, you face the balance between doing social good and why you do it in the business. There's some, some, never any doubt in John's mind that you had to have a healthy business. 
No doubt. And I wouldn't want anything to color that. You'll see it in the book, and any of you knew, knew that that was absolutely intense. The business had to grow. And he said something once that I'll read to you. Any living company has to have growth. You've got to be able to offer opportunities for people. The whole reason you exist is to produce profits for your shareholders. But fundamentally, you don't start with that. You don't start with that. You start with people who are motivated to accomplish great things. Almost inevitably, that means growth. Whether the great things can be a dinner for us that cuts decay, or disposable diapers, or no matter what it is, that's where growth comes from. So these things went together. And he'd be the first to say a company that's not, that's not successful can't do any social good. That depends on being successful. Not just today, but tomorrow and the day after that. But his commitment to this community was, in many ways, I think, akin to, he really is commitment to anything. And that was that it be sustained, that it be perpetuated. And he wanted to what he could do outside of his work, Cincinnati, to be perpetuated as a city that would be the home to our employees and our headquarters. And might that never change? May it never change in making Cincinnati healthy as a community. And you all know it. There isn't an organization in this town. It doesn't have P&G people, and sure many of you who are part of making it run. In recent years, uh, David Taylor and others have come up with a new short phrase, which John would really love. A force for good and a force for growth. A force for growth and a force for good. And that's really, that, that's a banner people are carrying in PNG today. Being a force for growth and a force for good. And I think he'd be so happy with that.